What's up, you crazy kids? Today we're talking about workplace safety. So, the workplace is a very dynamic spot and things can go wrong all the time, uh, whether it's forklift accidents or somebody getting caught in a lathe or a tree falling on you or the printer turning into an evil piece of technology and exploding. All of these are options. What we need to do is be realistic about the problem set that we face so that way we can create a more capable workplace to respond to whatever incident may show up. So the first things we're gonna start with is the three P's of workplace safety. So possession, proficiency, and placement. So first things first, we have to have gear on hand to respond, whether that's Tylenol and Band-Aids or a tourniquet and some chest seals, having the gear in the workplace is gonna make a huge difference because what we don't wanna do is have to run out to our truck or wait on 911 if somebody is facing a critical traumatic injury, right? The next thing after possession, so we have our gear in hand, is going to be proficiency, right? So everybody has to know how to use it, or and at least an elect few have to know how to use this gear. Something as simple as taking a stop the bleed course or doing some in-house training and bringing uh, some trained professionals in to teach you is gonna make a huge difference in responding to an emergency inside of a critical incident. So proficiency, right? You have to have a group of individuals that are proficient at using the tools to employ them properly. And then finally, placement. A lot of us work in large areas that span a, a wide variety of distances, everything from two meters to two miles on a work site, right? And so having placement is going to be a huge thing because it changes the time in which you have to respond to an issue. If I have to drive a mile to the first aid kit, well, that's gonna be a big issue if somebody's facing a critical bleed and I don't have gear on me. So placement of your gear, and that just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of planning, and a little bit of thought as to where should we locate our different resources on the job site or in the workplace or in your warehouse, whatever have you, to where we could respond to a critical incident in the appropriate amount of time. And that comes over to a couple of notes that I have. We wanna be realistic about our threat matrix. If you work in a paper facility, you shouldn't really worry about getting crushed by a tree limb. Is it possible that the tree out front of the side of the office falls? Absolutely it's possible, but the probability is very low. So we have to look at possibilities versus probabilities. It's much more probable that in the paper facility, somebody cuts their hand or gets a paper cut and needs a Band-Aid than needs a tourniquet. Is it impossible? No, it's not impossible, but we want to be realistic. So take a look at your job site. If you're working with uh, saws or band saws or milling equipment or lathes, all these different things, then have equipment on hand to deal with that problem set versus if you're dealing with computers and electronics and batteries, have equipment to deal with potential problems related to that set of issues, right? So you have to be realistic and actually analyze your workplace. What is dangerous and what is not? dangerous and how probable are these dangerous situations in in their happenings right next we want to create solutions through training and validation so what we don't want to do is analyze all these dangerous things and then be like oh my gosh it's so dangerous no let's create solutions so we can mitigate those risks right and that starts with proper training we want to get stop the bleed training first aid training cpr and aed training with at least an elect group of individuals at most with everybody inside the organization because it reduces your liability and it increases your survivability inside of a critical incident. So training your individuals and in how to respond these most likely realistic encounters is going to be super effective in mitigating any risk to you or to your coworkers or to your staff or your employees, right? Um, and then we wanna validate that. We wanna continue ongoing training, whether that's quarterly or semi-annually or annually, whatever it may be, look at how much do I want your, my people to be trained, how often, and then when do I wanna validate that? So that way you can rest assured at night, sleep in your little head on your pillow, knowing, hey, I have a safe workplace. And then finally, we wanna work as a team. 
This isn't going to be successful if we don't get everybody on board, if we don't properly explain why we're doing that. If everybody just has to go to another boring mandated training, nobody's going to want to participate. So take your realistic threat matrix and explain what dangers exist inside of the workplace and how they could affect each individual and relate it to them personally so that way you get investment and buy-in from the entire team. Doing this as a whole will allow you to employ your bleeding control station or your OSHA compliance kit or just your simple bear fact so much more effectively with so much more meaning behind it. Rather than just putting a bear fact on the wall and feeling like you're okay, what we want to do is have everybody aware of the first aid capability inside the office and have everybody aware of how to respond. I hope this helps. Leave comments in the section below as to how your validating and training in your workplace what kits are you using and employing inside your workplace what are you doing to make it a safer environment uh, that's more prepared for a critical incident we love you guys I'm excited to hear from you below Shalom <laughs>